our speaker to the podium. I give you Sandra Cooper. <laughs> Good morning, friends. It is always a pleasure to bring the message. And so I'm, just, I'm really delighted to welcome each and every one of you here to the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. And to those of you tuning in online, I also say welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, last Sunday, we officially welcomed five new members into our Temple of Light community. Any of those persons here this morning? Ah, yes, we have one. We have two. Okay, awesome. Let's give them another round of applause. Now, every time we do a, a, a welcoming, welcoming in ceremony, we all join in in reading our membership pledge. And it says, I promise myself to the best of my ability to realize God as a source of my life, to seek and express good, to live harmoniously with my fellow men, to, to depend on divine principle for my supply, my health, and my love. For God is the only presence and the only power in my life and affairs. So as I was reading that, I got very, very moved and I thought to myself, wow, what a powerful statement this is. And, and seeing that it, it in effect is a statement of commitment, I found myself thinking, am I really living up to this pledge? How committed am I in honoring it? And what is the impact that is having in my life? What if I were to ask you the same question? Are you living true to that commitment? Are you honoring your promise? So this morning I decided to take a look at what this pledge means. Because what I notice is that it's not a pledge to the church. It's a pledge to God. So a pledge is a solemn promise of undertaking to do or to refrain from doing something. Our membership pledge begins with the statement, I promise myself. A promise is a commitment to do or to not do something. As a noun, the word promise means a declaration assuring that one will or will not do something. As a verb, it means to commit oneself by a promise to do or to give. For example, I promised to bring something for the big sale last week Sunday. Or I might promise to complete and send a report to a client by a certain time on a certain day. The pledge as we read it last Sunday states, I promise myself. This is not a promise to the church or to the pastor or to anybody else. It is a promise that I am making to myself. Yet this might be one of the most difficult promises for one to keep. More so than a promise that we make to another. Consider some of the promises that we make to ourselves. Well, I promise to take better care of myself. I'm, I'm going to start exercising again. Sounds familiar? <laughs> Reverend John always says, as soon as I feel exercise coming on, I, what, you what is it again? <laughs> as soon as he, he feels exercise coming on, he sits down until the feeling passes. <laughs> or I promise to spend more time with my family or to call my friends more often. Or I, I promise to be, to be smarter with my money. Or I promise to get to church early on a Sunday morning. The challenge is that we often don't live up to these personal commitments, so we end up treating ourselves worse than how we would treat others. The thing is that when you break these kinds of personal promises, you send a powerful message that you are not important. Are you not important? Of course not. 
you also go against your values around being honest and acting with integrity. So let's imagine that we made a promise to self to be at church every Sunday morning. Making this promise to self says that we are serious about living this teaching and we consider ourselves important enough to do whatever we need to do to deepen our understanding of the path that we have chosen. The choice to be here on a Sunday comes, becomes a way in which we honor the commitment we have made to ourselves. We then follow through on that commitment by getting up, dressing up, and showing up. The next statement says, to the best of my ability. For, it, for myself, it means that I must go all out and do my absolute best to ensure that I learn what I need to learn, understand it, internalize it, live it, and make myself an example of it. In order to make this happen, I have to come to class. I read, I explore, I question, I challenge, and I practice, practice, practice. There is no compromise. I remember when I was learning a spiritual mind healing treatment, which is what we call affirmative prayer. I remember listening to Reverend Dr. Elma Lumsden, our founding minister, and other senior um, practitioners in the um, temple at the time. And I would just listen to them with my mouth open and say, my God, I could never, ever treat like that. How many of you ever feel that way? Hear one of us up here and say, wow, boy, me could have never opened my mouth and treat so. But I stuck with it to the best of my ability. The emphasis being on my ability. It wasn't Dr. Elmer's ability, or Reverend John's ability, or anybody else's ability. Anybody else's ability, it was my ability. Subsequently, the more I did it, the easier it came. You think Usain Bolt got up and just, remember the first time he ran his, his race with, the, with his chain in his mouth, and then something happened, I think he pulled up. His first race wasn't so hot at all. And then he lived to become uh, perhaps the greatest sprinter we have seen to date. And so I believe that there, there came a point, you know, what we call that sweet spot in consciousness, where I just moved my, as, as Emerson would say, my bloated nothingness out of the way and just allowed myself to be that vehicle through which God speaks. And then, so treatment with, we, we understand it intellectually first. We understand the steps. We repeat them over and over and over. And then we let go and let God. That's how it works. So moving back into the pledge, the next part says, so after we say I promise myself to realize God as the source of my life. Now in the science of mind we learn that God is spirit, universal intelligence and the origin of everything. According to our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, God is the supreme mind and power back of all created form. The, the intelligence which responds to us. The intelligence that arises through the, the mineral, the vegetable and animal kingdoms and which blossoms in the human mind. End of that quote. This universal intelligence and energy finds an outlet in and through and as everything in our lives and everything that lives and expresses in whatever we can imagine, observe and experience. This means that everything we see, touch, taste, feel, hear and grasp with the physical senses is an effect that had its origin in divine mind. So all life without exception draws from this intelligence, um, this intelligent principle. And we are one with this principle, as it is with everything and everyone else. This is what we mean as God as source, God first. 
We must have an open mind to accept this idea because you see, the source as we know it is within. It is not the job that we have. It is not the business that we run. It is not the spouse who might provide or, or the inheritance. And it is not based on the benevolence of any God in the sky. I find this idea very reassuring as it means that I am drawing from a power that is infinite and which is my intuitive, all-knowing nature. In time, we all will awaken to this discovery. And when we do, we permit its power to flow through us, making us unstoppable. How's that? Hmm. The pledge then asks us to seek and express good. The science of mind tells us that a gardener goes forth in faith to sow his seeds. He has learned that as he sows, so shall he reap. Of course, Ernest Holmes drew from all of the, 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 the religious philosophies of the world. So are you familiar with where he's coming from here? Remember the parable of the sower and the seed? Okay, so he's using that metaphor. And so he says that the law works for all alike. Every seed must bear of its own kind. If we can conceive only a little good, that is as much as we can experience. We must therefore instill in mind the fundamental proposition that good is without bounds. Our good is without bounds. Let's say that together. My good is without bounds. My good is without bounds. And then we have to go out and look for it, or allow it to reveal itself through us. It is easy to find good in the gurgle of a baby. Every time I see Lauren's little boy up here, and he's just very, I mean, this wide-eyed um, little soul, and then he hears music, and he just, his body can't help but move. I kind of feel that way still, you know? <laughs> because I get excited in, when I see the, a, a beautifully choreographed dance, or sometimes the sun just does a dance in the sky in the evening when it's setting. And it's so absolutely beautiful. How, however, how do we find the good when life throws us what we call a curved ball? Hmm. What lessons are there to learn when there's a financial challenge, when there's a diagnosis, when there's a relationship breakup, when there's a loss um, and somebody passes? Where's the good in all of that? So, I've also thought that with, with Jamaica, as in many parts of the world, are, um, we are challenged by um, quite a bit of criminal activity. How do we find the good in someone who is responsible, so to speak, for criminal behavior? Yet in the face of these circumstances, it is in that that we are called upon to do just that, to look for the good, to ensure that our intentions are aligned with the highest values and that our words are kind, respectful, loving, and life-affirming all the time. I think I'd like us to say that because it's an affirmation of our intention. And I'll just say it one time. My words are kind, respectful, loving, and life-affirming. Together. My words are kind, respectful, loving, and life-affirming. All the time. The next part of the pledge could present a bit of a challenge as it asks us to live harmoniously with our fellow man. <laughs> I guess the author of the pledge never had an experience with Jamaican taxi drivers. <laughs> In his book, Living the Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes penned an essay entitled, Getting Along with People, in which he states, no one can live to himself alone. Other people are, are as much a part of our lives that we can't think of living without them. We must be with others, enjoy them, and act with them without in any way seeking to control their actions. He goes on to say, 
We must have a firm conviction that all people live in God. And we must have a deep realization that we, we are all one in this universal spirit, which is God. End of that quote. He urges us to forgive ourselves and everyone else for everything that has ever happened as everyone is doing about the best they know how with what they have. You believe that? Everyone is doing the best they know how with what they have. And that includes parents of past, relationships of past. It's a wonderful way to release and forgive. Holmes asks us to consider this, and I quote, if we have not received joy from others, it is because we have stifled joy at the center of our own being. Joy must go forth to meet joy. Love must go forth to meet love. All people are rooted in God, and it is only as we go down to the roots of our being that we unify with others in spirit and in truth. This then becomes a formula for us to live harmoniously with our fellow man. The pledge, I mean, as we go towards the end, it says, we must depend on divine principle for my supply, my health, and my love. Now, depending on divine principle means that we know, and we know that we know, that the source in which we live and move and have our being is God, and that God is spirit, spirit is substance, and substance is supply. This is the key to the realization of a more abundant life. And in one of the Science of Mind readings, this month or last month, it, it gave a demonstration, an example of the difference between abundance and prosperity. You know there's a difference? Abundance is the allness of life that is around us. It is the infinite number of stars in the sky. It is all the resources that's available all around all the time. Prosperity is our ability to manifest that abundance, whether it is via money, or it is by whatever resources that we need, relationships, perfect health, to have comfort and well-being. That is our prosperity. And therefore, by our consciousness, we generate the prosperity. We draw from the abundance. It's like, as Dr. Elmer would say, going to the ocean. Are you going to take a teaspoon? If you take a teaspoon, you're going to come away with a teaspoon full. If you take a cup, you'll come away with a cup full. What about a bucket? Yeah, you'll have a lot more. So at the end she says, dear, why not just attach a pipeline? So we are fully and wonderfully and infinitely connected to all of that which is. It says that the key to the realization of, an, of a more abundant life is the understanding that God is spirit and God is supply. And it also generates success in our financial affairs. The same goes for health, as we recognize that at the core of our being, no matter what the diagnosis or appearance of any condition, we are in essence perfect, whole, and complete. As for love, we have learned that God is love. And love is a divine givingness of spirit. We have been created in love, out of love, as love. As we come to depend on divine principle, more of our love nature is revealed. It then becomes more and more easy to drop the fear and the self-doubt and the limited thinking and let our love light shine. I urge you, place no limit on principle. It answers every question, solves every problem, is a solution to every difficulty, and it meets every need. The last statement says, for God is the only presence and the only power in my life and affairs. This brings the pledge full circle. It is a reaffirmation of God as source, as a driver of my life and a CEO of my affairs. And speaking of my affairs, I don't know how I would have survived or the quality of life that I would have had if I didn't have the science of mind to guide me, if I didn't have this teaching to guide me, 
It has served me in every single sphere of my life. It has enabled me to be a better parent. <laughs> That's a whole nother talk, right, Reverend John? <laughs> a better professional and a better practitioner, a better friend and a better everything. And this is why I can honestly say that daily, I fulfill the promise that the membership pledge invited me to make. By the way, I screw up sometimes, you know. Don't we all? But the, the, the challenge is to have such powerful self-awareness. There's an ABC um, strategy that I use. A is awareness. I become aware of when I'm feeling what I'm feeling or doing what I'm doing that is out of alignment with what the, um, God's highest intention is for me. So I firstly become aware and I go, oops. I mean, maybe for the first part of the experience, I might wallow a little bit. You can relate to that. You know, it's okay to maybe. I know the wallowing time has reduced considerably. So after the A, the B for me is being. Who are you being, Sandy? I'm being resistant. I'm being untrusting. I'm being limited. I'm letting the situation stop me. I'm being unkind and so on. So who must I now be being? I need to be um, spirit in expression. I need to be being um, clear about my abundance and so on. And so the next letter is C. What do you think C stands for? Choice. After I become clear of who I need to be being, I choose. And I choose a path that is in alignment with my highest and my best. Okay? And so, it's about putting God first. And no matter how many times I fall or succumb to being human, right? I can draw from that infinite reservoir of tools and resources to support me in realigning myself with my good. Our founding minister, Dr. Elmer, used to say, the principles of truth are simple, but living them is not easy. That is why the work never, ever stops. And like Nehemiah, I too am doing a great work. And I cannot come down. I will not come down. So I invite you to say the pledge with me and consider what it really means to you. I'm going to repeat it um, part by part. Consider what it means to you and how you think you can make it the guiding principle in your life. Let's say it together. I promise myself, to the best of my ability, to realize God as the source of my life, to seek and express good, to live harmoniously with my fellow men, to depend on divine principle for my supply, my help, and my love. For God is the only presence and the only power in my life and affairs. You know, I was very moved last Sunday as we sang the hymn, Breathe in Me, Breath of God. So we will close with it this morning. And we're going to remain seated to sing it. Because I don't want, I, well, let me say what I do want. I want us to just allow the words to float in and through every cell and fiber of your being. And I invite you to, to as you sing, to do it from a consciousness of unity and oneness with the infinite presence and the awesome power of spirit. Breathe in me, breath of God.
I invite you, friends, to take the program home with you and consider making the words of this song an invocation every morning as part of your daily ritual. Let every breath be a reminder of the life present expressing at the center of your being and an expression of your oneness with its wisdom, its guidance, its love, and its everlasting joy. Namaste.